Well, I want to share with you tonight a, a fresh word, a new word I just got last night in my dreams. It's a prophetic word of the day and hour that we're living in. Now, back in 1996, there was a piece of land that I had my eyes upon up in the mountains, uh, about five miles from our church. And uh, in my heart of hearts, I heard the Lord tell me not to buy that piece of land. But I kept at them and kept at them. And probably about three months, I wanted to build a house to get away from the church property because we were so busy here. I mean, we had a regular school. We had a college. Uh, I had a daily TV program. Uh, had a staff of 21 people. And, and it was just nothing but busy, busy, busy. And I got it in my head. I had to get away from the property because my parsonage is right across the parking lot. And I heard the Lord say, no, don't build it. But I kept at him. And then one day, about three months later, with a sad heart, he said, okay. So a lot of times, God will allow us to do what we want to do, though he knows the end results are going to be terrible. And uh, I'm sorry to say the end results was terrible. And it's not that God was against the house, but he, he knew what was going to happen. So I built this house. It was a strange kind of house. It was three stories, 5,500 square feet, a geodesic dome. And... Um, Back in 1998, tragedy hit us when my little girl got hurt. And I was in prayer one night, walking the floor with her in my arms because she took 24-hour care. And I heard the Lord say to me, this house is an Ishmael. And when I heard the Lord say that, uh, great, great uh, sorrow came upon my heart. I repented. I wept. I cried. The next morning when my family got up, we had our house still down here, which our maintenance man was living in, but he had moved out. And I told my family, I said, we're moving, we're leaving now. Well, my wife and my kids were overjoyed because they never wanted to live in that house anyways. And my wife was extremely filled with joy. Well, to make a long story short, I took that house and I used it for all of those years to bring in the homeless and the needy. So in spite of uh, uh, my disobedience, we used it for God's glory. But last night, and then finally, uh, not this March, but March of 2022, we finally shut it down. But last night in this dream, we were at that house once again, and uh, we were using it to hold church services. And we were all in there, about a hundred of us, because the front room is rather large. And we're in there, and my wife's leading worship, a, a young man's leading worship. We're all experiencing a touch of God, a move of God, and all of a sudden the house began to shake a little bit. And the walls began to tear apart, the walls, the exterior of that geodesic dome. And what was weird, though, because the walls are just fiberglass. There's no honeycomb in it. But when the walls began to tear apart, it looked like the, wall, the, the, the exterior was made of a, of a honeycomb substance with layers. But it was tearing apart. And uh, so we all got out of the house. We all fled from the house. Nobody got hurt. Well. I don't know, it was probably pretty early in the morning. I woke up and I'm laying there and I'm just talking to the Lord because it seemed like it was a prophetic word. And uh, the Spirit of God began to speak to me and he said, Son, you know that that house was the house of Ishmael. And, and I said, Lord, I know it. I, I know it was a work of the flesh. He said, first of all, he said, uh, you were sincere. Uh, the people who were in the house were sincere. They were worshiping me sincerely, so none of them got hurt. But he said uh, that, 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 that house that in that dream was falling apart. And I said, yes, Lord. He said, that's, uh, he said, that's symbolic of global society. I said, okay, Lord, talk to me. He said, you know, that house, you, you didn't build it upon my word or my will. You decided you did what you wanted to do. And because the house was not established or built upon what I want, uh, what my desire was, he said, it, it began to fall apart. He said, that is what's about to happen to your society. He said, not only is it falling apart, he said, uh, it is crumbling before your very eyes. And uh, because originally our nation was founded upon the word of God. Not only was our nation founded upon the word of God, but our churches were, our schools were, our educational system was, uh, the townships were, families were built upon the word of God. But you notice, ever since the Supreme Court kicked out prayer and they kicked out the Word of God, that has kind of been a domino effect and has followed all the way through into every branch of society, into uh, not only 
uh, what's going on in D.C., which I, I don't call it a sewage, I, I, I don't call it a, a, a swamp, I call it a sewage. I mean, our, our government, I hate to tell you this, is, is like a sewage. Uh, because we've got men in position who have no fear of God. They have no love for God. They have no desire for God. But that is following all the way into every part of our society. And so we're beginning to see, and actually the word that came to me is the, the ripping of the fabric of society, the ripping of the fabric of society living in the midst of uh, societal collapse. And that's what's happening right now. We're, we're watching society collapse. Remember, it says in Hebrews, and I'll probably be able to get to that particular set of scriptures tonight. I hope to, but it says that everything that can be shaken will be shaken, that only that which is eternal may remain. And so right now we see this. We see uh, the governments are falling apart. Educational institutions are falling apart. Companies are falling apart. Churches are falling apart. And families are falling apart. Why? Because they are not building their lives, their companies their uh, uh, educational systems, uh, the governments from the townships, uh, the school boards, all the way up to Washington, D.C. and the White House. Because we're not building our lives upon the truth of God's word, everything's falling apart. Now, there's scriptures, and we can't spend all night in this because I want to move rather rapidly along this lesson or this message, this prophetic word. But in Hebrews 1.3, it talks about Jesus, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, and notice, upholding all things by the word of his power, who, who, who when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So we know that Christ paid the price for our salvation and our redemption, but it says that he is upholding all things by the word of his power. That means everything that is being held together is being held together by God and his word. Well, if it's the word of God, and I'll take out the word if, because it is, the word of God is keeping everything together. You take the word of God out, and guess what happens? It all falls apart. And that's just natural. Uh, anything to do with uh, light or sanity or morality or anything that is good, because God is good. And he, he is light. In him is no darkness. And if God himself is light, he's truth, uh, he's morality, he's holy. You take God out of the picture, and what do you got? You have what? Darkness, utter, complete, absolute darkness. You, you have insanity. You have wickedness. You have immorality. You have perversion. You have twistedness. You, you take God out of the picture because, remember, Christ is the light of the world, and the Father is uh, the Father of lights. You take God out, all you got is darkness, and so what happens to society? It gets swallowed up by the darkness. It gets swallowed up by the immorality, the perversion, the twistedness. And actually, the Bible prophesied this. He said that the day will come when they were going to say evil is good. They're going to say evil is good. It's right. It's acceptable. Uh, it's what we desire. And, and what's good is evil. For in other words, anything that is decent and holy and moral and upright and pure is, in their eyes, going to be twisted, sick, and perverted. Uh, so you might say that we've, we have an insane asylum being run by insane people. And, and, and insan in, insanity uh, can't be helped when you take away the truth. If you take away the truth, then all you're doing is you're building on nothing but a lie. Uh, in John 1.10, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. The world knew him not. Uh, who, who's him? The Word. In, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were made by him, the Word, and without the Word was nothing made that was made. So, if you take away the word of God, the truths of the Bible, then what do you have? You have what? Nothing. Uh, because nothing was made without the word. Remember, in the beginning was the word, word was made by him, uh, and, and nothing was made without the word. So if you take the word of God out of the home, 
uh, out of the heart. If I take the word of God out of my heart, my life will utterly, completely fall apart. And before I got born again, I, I did have some of the word because I was raised in a, a religion to some extent. And without me knowing it, and, and because I went to a Catholic school until I think the third grade, and then I was transferred to the public school. But I think even in those days, we still had some Bible reading, some prayer, uh, pledge allegiance, and things like that. But now that's all been done away with. So everything that has to do with the Word of God is being taken away from society and the natural results is the ripping and the tearing and the destruction of society. And what's amazing is we are standing in the midst of chaos. We're standing in the midst of insanity, a perversion of darkness, of immorality, and we're watching it happen. We're watching it happen. Now, my wife and I, we like to listen to the Bible every morning, every night. And uh, she has a program. And we listen to 15 or 20 minutes. And then what she does, she plays the next day and the next day. And then we do that at night sometimes, twice or three times. So you, you might say that we're, we go through the whole Bible possibly six times a year together. And, uh, but that's her program. I'm just, you know, I'm just there with her. And she's listening. And we've been going, and you go through the Old Covenant and the New Covenant because they give you a little bit of both. And as we're listening to the history of the seed of Abraham and during the time of the kings it's amazing because the kings that rejected the word of God they, they became literally insane immoral uh, ungodly and judgment came uh, I, I was in the sheriff's department here about a month ago and uh, the deputy sheriff and one of the other sheriffs wanted to sit down and talk to me and uh, just about biblical things. And so I was amazed. They kept me there for over an hour. And we're just talking about biblical things. And they're both Christians. And the deputy sheriff said to me, he said, do you think God's judgment is on our nation? I said, well, I said, God's judgment comes upon not just the nation, but upon anybody who rejects his word. Uh, the Bible says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And because thou hast rejected knowledge, I have rejected you. So what many don't realize even in, uh, in, in, in the church is that if, if you don't embrace the truth of this book, if you reject the truth of this book, which is the word of God, which keeps us together, it keeps everything together. And if you reject that word, then uh, all that's going to happen is it will fall apart. Uh, I find out that the more I embrace the word of God, the more my life comes together. And the more I reject the word of God, the more my life falls apart. And you lose your peace, you lose your joy, you lose your victory. Uh, you, 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 sin comes in, uh, pain comes in, um, bitterness comes in, sorrow, uh, depression comes in. I mean, everything that is of the world, the flesh and the devil comes in because Satan he, he, he's the father of lies, and there's no truth in him. There's, you say, well, the devil has the truth. Oh, no, no, no. He, he, he's taken the truth, and he's perverted it, and he's twisted it, and he's manipulated it for his own selfishness. So you've got to look at that, that, that there are ministers out there, and the Bible says in the last days there's going to be a time of great delusion and deception because people are not going to love the truth. They reject the truth, and God says, because if they reject the truth, I will reject them. So society, it, I'm telling you, it's, it's so simple to see this prophetically. I can see it, that it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Now, it says it will be as the days of Noah. And I got to thinking about Noah. See, no, Noah, Noah's generation... If you go back to Adam, of course, Adam and his wife, they committed sin, and then they had Cain and Abel and Seth, and Cain killed Abel. That was the beginning of the rejection of the will and the word of God. And then as you go along, generation after generation came, and the word of God was still there. They, they knew there was a creator. They knew there was a maker. They, they knew about Adam. They, they knew about Eve. They knew about the fall of man. And matter of fact, there's a scripture that said like the fourth generation after Adam and man began to walk with God. And of course, the Bible says Enoch walked with God and was not. But then in the next coming generations, they basically turned their back on God's word. Now, there's only one family 
who kept embracing the word. And actually, during that time, there was uh, Methuselah, which was the father of, of, of Noah. And then there was Enoch. And then, of course, Enoch was taken because Enoch walked with God. What did he do? He walked in the word. He walked in the truth. He walked in the light. You know, the Bible says, walk in the light as he is in the light. And uh, it says that he came that we might no longer abide in darkness. That's why Jesus came. But the, the day came when Methuselah died, Enoch was taken. The only righteous people that left on the earth, when I say righteous people, are those who knew the word of God. They embraced the truth, to what was available in that day and hour. We don't know exactly what it was. Uh, but they, they walked in the light of the truth. And so God said, listen, he said, uh, society has lost their mind. They've become insane. They've become immoral. He said, their thoughts are nothing but continually violence. That's all that filled their minds and their hearts. If you look at a lot of the entertainment system of the day, whether it be video games or if it be movies or whatever, uh, they, it's just filled with violence. It's filled with, with killing and murdering and, and, and rape and, and, and having relationships outside of marriage and, and same-sex relationships. And, it just, and, and, and now we've got to the place where they're so confused, they can't tell uh, what, what they are anymore, whether they're male or female. And this is where we're at right now, society is literally falling apart before us. Somebody says, Pastor Mike, do you think we live in the days of Noah like it was in the days of Noah? Oh, absolutely, we're in the days of, just like it was in the days of Noah, where immorality and perversion was exalted, and anything that was decent and holy and morally upright and godly and built on the word is mocked and laughed at and rejected and literally outlawed. Do you realize that the word of God in many nations of the world today is outlawed? It's outlawed. The name of Jesus is outlawed within uh, our, our, uh, the, the Congress and the Senate and in the White House. It's basically outlawed. I remember some years ago when we had another man in office and he actually outlawed using the word Christmas. And for a number of years it was Xmas. Xmas, not long, long, long on Christmas, but Xmas, because they can't stand the name of Christ. Well, gross darkness has engulfed society, has swallowed us up, lies and perversion and immorality. And Isaiah 60, verse 2, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness. Gross, that means utter darkness, the people. Uh, Matthew 6, 23, but if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. And if therefore the light that is in thee it, it be a darkness, how great is that darkness? For in other words, uh, that, 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 that the very light that we think is light, if it's not built and based upon the truth of God's word, it's actually darkness. And if you think you're full of light, but that light is actually darkness, then how great is that darkness? So I ask ourselves, our society right now, how great is the darkness that is in the human heart? It's in the human heart. Um, John, for, John, for, uh, John 1, 5, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, that light is the word of God. You know, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So as we preach, as we teach, as we declare, as we proclaim the word of God, and people do not want to hear it, they don't want to listen to it, they don't want to believe it, so you might say the light is shining in the gross darkness of our generation, but people can't see it because they don't want it. As a matter of fact, in John 3, 19, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men, listen to this now, men loved darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. You might say it this way, that the, the, the number one probably, uh, I heard this back many years ago when James Dobson was still around, and uh, he did a survey, and this was back in the probably about 19, probably 1998, 90, May 7. They went to all these elementary schools, and they surveyed the teenagers, and they wanted to find out what was their favorite movies. And I, I never watched these movies, but movies like uh, Freddy Krueger, I think it was called, and Nightmare on Elm Street. And for in other words, they were horror flick movies. They were, they were cut them up, slice them, kill them, 
murder them uh, uh, movies. Now listen, this was the favorite movies of these youth. Well, here's the shocking thing. Um, the, the schools that James Dobson went to were not public schools, they were Christian schools. So we're talking back in the late 1990s, James Dobson surveyed Christian schools and found out the students loved the horror movies of killing and murdering and raping. That's what they loved. So if that was 20 some years ago, where are we at today? People love darkness rather than light. John 12, 46, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. 1 John 1, 6, if we say that we have fellowship with him, with Christ, and we are walking in darkness, we lie and we're not doing the truth or the truth isn't really in us. Um, so most, I think, of our society today is, is not a swamp, it's a sewage. It's, it's filth. Now, I had another dream about this, this monster that was made from sewage, and uh, it's in my books about the dreams I've had, and it was a very frightening dream, and this, this, this sewage monster was devouring everything that was good and holy and decent, and uh, I knew that it was sin. Sin will devour you. If you don't submit yourself to God and resist the devil, sin will devour you. And David said, I've hid your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And Jesus is the word. We realize that. But it's not just the person, Jesus. Uh, it's not just the DNA of Jesus. It is the word of Jesus in our hearts. That's why Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So you might say that a tidal wave of, uh, of filth has flooded not just America, but now the earth. Now I've heard people say, yeah, but Brother Mike, uh, there's been terrible times like this in the past. Well, I won't disagree with you. That's one reason why uh, the Tower of Babel was created, that God might separate the nations, that when one nation would be drowning, the other nation would be surviving, and that way all the nations of the world wouldn't be destroyed, because in Noah's day, they were basically one community. And so after the flood, uh, God said, I can't keep you all together anymore. I want you all to spread out over the whole globe of the earth, because that way if one people becomes corrupted, then all the people won't be corrupted. Well, for the first time since uh, before uh, the Tower of Babel, we're one community. Well, what do you mean? We, we all speak different languages. No, you don't understand. We've got the Internet. We've got technology now where we all can watch the same things globally. We can all be affected by the same things. And so there is an absolute tidal wave of, 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 of gross darkness, perversion, immorality, twisted thinking, sickness that has overtaken the globe. And it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Uh, Elon Musk, and I'm not against technology. You can, I use technology. I mean, we started using technology back in 1996, and we started live streaming back then. We were probably one of the first ministries who did it. And uh, that's why if you go on the Internet, we have thousands and thousands of videos up there through the years, you know. Uh, so you can use it for God. But the devil, he's taken a hold of this stuff. And now he's perverting all of humanity. A good friend of mine that I used to go preach for in Mexico and Guatemala, uh, Joe Dyke. Uh, I was down there uh, many, many years ago. And we, uh, we, he had about four four-wheel drive vehicles. And we got into these vehicles with a team of men, and we headed up into the mountains to get to the Mayan Indians. And I mean, way, way up there, way up there, way up there. So we finally get up there in the mountains, and it was a rough journey. And we got to a people group that uh, basically no one had really evangelized, and we went in there. And we showed them the first movie they had ever seen. We brought a projector with us with a generator, a 16 millimeter, and we showed them the, the, the life of Jesus uh, in their language and, uh, that night. And we gave an order call, and it was a tremendous response. 
Well, a couple years later, I was talking to Brother Joel, and I said, hey, how's our church doing up there in the mountains of Guatemala and Mexico? He said, oh, Mike, he said, um, I'm sorry to tell you. I said, what? He said, they, they've just been swallowed up by darkness. I said, well, how's that? He said, well, the government ran electric up there. They ran up electric lines. And I said, okay, well, they brought TVs in because there was a TV signal. And he said, uh, all of that filth from Hollywood got dumped on them. He said, now when you go up there, because those people were so impressionable and so easily persuaded that basically the women and the men are all acting just like they do in Hollywood. I said, what? He said, yeah, they've been completely swallowed up by the darkness. So uh, in, in the next two years, the whole earth is going to be covered with satellites. I think 45,000 of them from Elon Musk, you know, SpaceX. And he's launching Internet satellites around the world. And you can even buy the service now in America. And you can download or upload Internet. But he said in, in the darkest, mo most remote parts of the Amazon and Africa and every nation of the world in the next two years, you just set up a little dish and you can connect into the backbone of the Internet and anything you want to watch will be available. Now, I heard some time ago that it's hard for me to believe this, that 80 percent of all the traffic uh, in the world, in the world, uh, goes to pornography, 80 percent. I mean, 80 percent of Internet traffic. Well, my son Dan told me the other day, he said, Dad, he said, that's global. Do you know what it is in America? I said, you mean it's 80 percent around the world, but not America? He said, oh, no. He said, Dad, 90 percent of all the traffic of the Internet in America is going to pornography. Help us, Jesus. We have a tidal wave of sewage that has come into the American culture, and I cannot imagine what the world is going to be like in another 10 years. We've watched it just nosedive in the last, what? And, and actually the last, I'm going to say, two, six, uh, uh, the last 14 years. We, we've had, we've seen people embracing lifestyles and perversions and immorality that anybody with any sanity would know, uh, and with any sanity would know was wrong. And now we, we have, we have, we have had a tidal wave. Insanity, uh, in, in Romans it says, because they did not, des not, desired not to know the truth, God would turn them over uh, to reprobate minds. And so every part of our society where people's lives are not built upon the truth of God's word, uh, total chaos is coming in. Uh, financially, mentally, emotionally, maritally, educationally, uh, local governments, main government, companies, companies. Look at the companies now. Uh, companies are self-destructing. This is what we're talking about. In this dream, everything was self-destructing. Because why? Because they're promoting wokeism. They're, they're, they're grabbing a hold of perversion. You said, but Pastor Mike, a, a lot of society is yet resisting them. They're standing against them. Y yes, you're right, but for how long? Because it's only by the word of God in our heart that we're able to maintain our sanity. Now, I know what I'm talking about because at one time I really was mentally and emotionally bankrupt. I was sick. I was a sick, sick puppy in every regard. I, I was sick uh, emotionally, mentally, physically. And the, the day I was committing suicide, my 19th birthday, February uh, 18th, 1975, 3 o'clock in the afternoon in the Navy, the, the fear of God fell on me. And at that moment, I, I, I uh, invited Jesus Christ into my heart, and I was radically transformed. And at that moment, uh, a lot of that darkness, a lot of that twistedness, a lot of that perversion, uh, that manic depression, uh, alcoholism, drug use, pornography, cussing, swearing was ripped right out of me. But that's because Jesus is the truth. And then I began to hide the truth in my heart. That's what I began to do. And I, I can tell you at times, there has been times since I've been saved for almost 49 years, when I've gone through some terrible, terrible tests and trials and tribulations, and a lot of them times was my own fault, 
that I would have literally lost my mind if it had not been for the Word of God in my heart. I would have lost my mind. Because before I got saved, I couldn't put up with one one hundredth of the pressure that I've been under since I've been saved. And so I, I got a lot of pressure on me in a lot of areas, but I'm able to stand because of the Word of God in my heart. And that's the only thing that's keeping me from standing. Psalms 10, 4. The wicked through the pride of his countenance would not seek after God, and God is not in all of his thoughts. Uh, so the wicked, because of pride, for in other words, uh, I want to do what I want to do. I did it my way, like the old uh, song used to sing, Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. And now we see society. We see uh, uh, government, uh, whether it be uh, federal government, state government, local government, township government. They're doing it their way. And so insanity is taking over the educational institutions and even a lot of the so-called Christians. Uh, a lot of your church denominations now are, have rejected the word of God and they're embracing the darkness. Or let me say it this way. They're swallow, being swallowed up by the darkness. And so anything that's not built on the word of God, it's going to fall apart. We'll get a chance to talk about that a little bit because Jesus gave us the parable about two men. The one man who built his house upon the rock and another man who built his house upon the sand. And, and Jesus, this, he's talking about our lives personally, but also then uh, 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 globally, you might say, that if we build our house upon the word of God, it's like you uh, finding a rock next to, you know, a big flat plateau next to a river. And I've seen them in Europe. I, I've seen where uh, thousands of years ago, I, I was in uh, uh, Europe and I've also been in, in Israel. And there are buildings who are that are still standing from the days of Jesus Christ. I mean, we're talking 2,000 years ago, but you know what they did? And they're built next to the sea or next to rivers. Is they? And I can't imagine the work it took uh, the elbow grease it took to do this, but they literally would cut down into the rock and then they would lay their foundation in the rock and they would build their castles or their houses. Uh, but there's other people who didn't want to do what it took and they could throw a house up lickety slick with no problem and they would build their house upon the sand. And uh, you, you know what happens that when the rain comes, and then the river rises, so the flood comes, the wind comes, and those houses come tumbling down so quick you can't believe it. But yet that river and that rain and that wind beat against the house that was founded and built into the bedrock, and it just still keeps standing. Well, that's the believer's life. If my life is built on truth, not just sincerity and not just good desires, but my life is built on the word of God, then when the storms come and the wind and the rain and the river rises, guess what? I'm still going to be standing there when the storm clears out. Now, there's going to be trees broken down. There might be some broken windows and some property damage, but the house is still standing. But if I would look over where my neighbor's house was built on the beach, it's gone. I mean, the river just took it away. The waves of the ocean just bashed it to pieces, and that means everybody who was in that house was dead. We, we see this. I see this every day. I've been pastoring since 1977, and, and I have watched more people than I want to think about Christians whose lives were just utterly, completely swallowed up in the darkness and destroyed. I mean, darkness. I mean, I, I preached with people who at one time lived for God, knew God, walked with God, had God use them in mighty, wonderful miracles and signs and wonders, and they just up and went into the darkness. Well, why would they just up and go into the darkness? Because the word of God wasn't in their heart. Maybe at one time it was like Solomon, but they forsook the word of God for something else, and the storm came and wiped them out. We're living in them kind of times. Listen, Psalms 119, 155. I want you to listen to this. Salvation is far from the wicked. See, who's the wicked? Those who will not seek God. Uh, those who, who uh, have, do not have God in their thoughts. That's the wicked. That's who God calls wicked. Because people will say, well, they're not wicked. L listen to me. 
I'm not saying this. This is not my, this ain't Mike Yeager's philosophy or quote or doctrine. This is God's doctrine. He said, anybody who does not seek after the face of God all of the days of their life, in the eyes of God, they're wicked. Uh, uh, you need to see this. We need to believe this. I believe this. That if I stop seeking God, I will become that which I'm talking about tonight. And I was. At one time, I was wicked. I, I didn't seek God. I didn't love God. I didn't serve God. I didn't obey God. I didn't follow God. And God said I was wicked. And I don't care what anybody calls you. They could call you righteous and holy and pure uh, just because you prayed a little prayer. God doesn't. God said those uh, who don't seek my face uh, and, and I'm nowhere in their thoughts or their desires, they're wicked. And he said, salvation is far from the wicked. Listen, for they seek not thy statues. What? It, it's, listen, let me read it again. Psalms 119, 155. Salvation is far from the wicked. That means salvation is, it, it's, it, you can't, they can't even see it. Why? Because it's only found in the word of God. And it says, salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statues. You know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added on to you. What things? Uh, good things. The, the character of God, the, 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 the nature of God, the personality of God will be added to you. But if you're not seeking God, you are in a world of hurt. You're not in the sewage. You're, I mean, you're not in the swamp. You're in the sewage. You're being swallowed up by darkness. Now, the good news is you can repaint, you can turn around, you can stop. Um, so I, I know these challenges are daunting and they seem to be unsurmountable. And, and, but the, really the key is faith. You've got to have faith that what God says he means and he means what he says. And there's so many scriptures that talk about this. Remember, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God in Romans 10, 17. And Colossians 1.13, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dearly begotten son. So God wants to, because he commands the light to shine out of the darkness. And so that's what salvation is. God uh, takes us out of the darkness of insanity. And what's darkness? Darkness without the word of God. Remember, into the word of God, uh, said, let there be, because Christ is the word, it was outer darkness. So without the word, your mind is dark, your emotions are dark, your, 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 every part of you is dark, it's dark. Uh, utter darkness, and that's why hell is utter darkness. There is no light in hell. There is no truth in hell. There is no freedom in hell. Nothing but pain and misery. And, 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 and insanity, insanity. Uh, hell is, 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 is the worst insane uh, uh, asylum there is. There is no place more insane than hell. And I know the Lord dropped me into hell at 19 years old for two and a half hours. And, and while they're all, everybody around me, as they were being swallowed up in the darkness of hell and the, and the burning, never-ending heat of the lava, they were cursing and swearing and attacking God verbally, just utter, complete insanity, just darkness, utter darkness. And I don't know about you, I don't want to spend eternity there. So I've got to embrace the light. I've got to love the light. I've got to love the truth. I've got to hide the truth inside of me. And I, I see so many today, even those who confess to be Christians, I'm not judging their, I'm judging their fruit. And I'm here to encourage you that if you don't have the word of God in your heart, I want to encourage you. You know, think about this. When churches ought to be coming together more often, uh, they're coming together less frequently. I mean, you know, when COVID hit, they shut down their churches. I think they said, I don't know how, what percentage, that most of those Christians never went back to church, never went back, and said they never will go back to church. Uh, I'm not saying they're not watching anything good on, on, on the Internet or TV, but I tell you what, it doesn't, it doesn't fulfill the will of God when he says that we must gather together. And even so much more as we see the day approaching. What day is approaching? The day of utter darkness and, and immorality and perversion like it was in the days of Noah, like Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and that's where we're at. And I really am convinced that most of your major cities, your major cities in America, 
They, they are Sodom and Gomorrah. I, I, I know I, uh, years ago I talked to a guy who had gone to, I think, Denmark and Holland. And, and, and he said, you, you, uh, Brother Mike, you can't, you can't believe the insanity. This was many years ago. Uh, in Holland, where they have storefronts, and the, the women are in there, and they're, 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 they're presenting their wares, and the people are just completely swallowed up, swallowed up, swallowed up in darkness. Now, I'm not speaking evil about Australia, uh, but when I was in the Philippines, and I was in an area where it was uh, ill repute, and, uh, uh, and I'm telling you that people came to me to offer themselves to me, and, uh, and, and, and I, I wouldn't have nothing to do with them. I'd preach Jesus to them. But I was talking to somebody later on, and we were just traveling through that community. We weren't really preaching there. And he told me, he said, Mike, do you know who the worst people are here in, in this red light district? I said, I have no idea. He said, men from Australia. They, they come here to fulfill their sickest, most perverted, most twisted, most ungodly desires. Well, that was many years ago. I, I don't even want to think. The Bible says, don't even speak of those things which are done to them in secret. But we, are, we, we have gone over the cliff like the pigs that were filled with the devils. I'm telling you what, our society has already, it's not getting close to the edge of the cliff. It has gone over the cliff. Now, I know there are many people who are trying to rescue us from this by thinking if they get on the school board. Uh, if they do this or they do that, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, I, I really think, except for the fact of a mighty move of God, it's beyond redemption now. I, I think we've come to the place where like when God spoke to Abraham about, about Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, I'm not saying God's going to destroy the righteous with the wicked, but you know what he did in Sodom and Gomorrah. What did he do? He took Lot by the hand and they pulled them out of Sodom and Gomorrah because his righteous soul was vexed every day by their perversions. I really believe we're coming to that place right now. I speak this prophetically. Listen to me. Those of you who are watching and you're in areas where you're being swallowed up by the darkness and it could be because you're just all alone and, and iron sharpeneth iron and there's nobody there to help you to stand strong and to live holy and right. And I'm telling you, I believe that God is about to take his people by the hand, those who are righteous, and he is about to pull them out of those places of perversion. It's because you're there, but you're not perverted, but you see it every day. Your righteous soul is vexed, and God is about to pull you out of those places because they are, uh, they are beyond salvation. I, I heard this to terrible story back about four years ago. A minister came and he had, I think, came from Sweden and, and, and he said God sent him to a sin-filled city in Florida. And he got into this sin-sick city and he tried to start a church and he began to build a church and he had his children in that environment. And the next thing you know, uh, the, the world got a hold of his son and pulled him into the utter darkness of having a reprobate mind and doing that which is unseemly, men with men, it says, and he was completely gone. He lost his son because he took him into that perversion. I'm telling you prophetically right now, you got to get your kids out of the public school system. You have got to. If you really love them, if you really care about them, if you're really concerned about them, get them out of the secular colleges. And I'm sorry to tell you, a lot of the so-called Christian colleges, you got to get them out. Uh, those of you who are going to denominations that are embracing abominations, you need to get out of those churches. If you want to save your soul, if you want to rescue your soul, if you don't want to lose your soul, you got to come out. And the Bible says, come out and be separate, my people. Be holy as he is holy. Now listen, I'm not attacking people. I'm just telling you this is where we're at. In Hebrews 12, 26, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also the heavens. 
And this word yet once more signifying the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve God with, accept, with God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Um, I'm telling you everything that is ungodly is being shaken. And, and, and if you're not living a holy, godly, separated, sanctified, set-apart life, you are about to have your life crumble like a dry cookie. Your life is about to fall apart like a house built on the sand, and the storm is already raging all around you. You may be able to hold your house together for a little while, but it ain't going to last very long, brothers and sisters. And I'm going to tell you what the Lord said, flee for your lives. That's what Peter said in Acts, flee for your lives from this wicked and adulterous generation. You got to flee for your lives. 2 Timothy 3, 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers, listen, lovers of their own selves, covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. I'm telling you, I've dealt with a lot of men in our society, homeless people, poured my life into them. I'm not bragging, it's Jesus in me. And out of all the hundreds and maybe thousands I've ever helped, Every single one of them, but maybe two or three, the minute I would put my foot down and say enough's enough, they would try to destroy my life through slander or a threat of physical violence or uh, through other means they tried to destroy me. And so I'm thankful, I'm thankful. We have a society today that is unthankful. I, I got up this morning and my heart was filled with such gratitude. My eyes filled with tears, thanking God for another day, thanking God for his wonderful goodness and his kindness and his long suffering towards me in spite of me. And I have such a thankful heart for what God has done for me in my life. But now we have a time of people that are so unthankful. Uh, Ephesians 417, this I say therefore testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts, who being past feelings have given themselves unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Now, what, what does that mean? It means our hearts are so dark because they don't have the truth inside of them. Their lives are full of corruption and perversion and immorality. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not attacking them. I, I'm telling you, I lived there. I, I did. I, I lived in that realm. I lived in that place. I ran with men outside of Chicago. They, they, the men I ran with, they were all perverts. I'm telling you now, they were more perverted than I was because I started running with them when I was about 12 years old. And a lot of them were quite a bit older than I was. And they even tried to pull me into some of their really twisted, sick perversion. But my tender little heart wouldn't let me go that route. But I would have headed that route without Jesus if I would have survived that attempt to commit suicide on February 18th, 1975. But God had mercy on my wretched soul. Matthew 7, 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be like a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. We're going to close in a couple more scriptures. Uh, Luke 6, 46. Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Whosoever come to me and heareth my saying and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man would build his house and dig deep and laid the foundation on rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house. That stream is a stream of sewage. It's sick, it's, it's more, it's sick, sick, twisted, uh, immoral desires, attitudes, thoughts, entertainments, 
uh, activities in this world is going to beat against your life, your house. And when the flood of this immorality, this sewage arose, this, it beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it. For it was pounded upon a rock, but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So uh, about three, four weeks ago, I, uh, you know, I, I, I have internet, and I use it to study and to pray and to uh, do my books and, and, and everything else and propagate the gospel. And, and uh, I saw there was a, a video about a flood. And, uh, but it didn't look like a normal flood, so I clicked it, and here it was. It was a river that was coming out of the mountains and uh, through the valleys, and it was coming down through a town. And when that flood came, it was nothing but looked like pure mud, garbage, sewage. And these people were seeing it coming, and they began to flee for their lives. And this, 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 this sewage just came and, and took down the bridges, took down the houses, swept away the people and the cars. I mean, right there on camera. Just, woo, uh, uh, it was a river of sewage. And I'm telling you right now, that's what spiritually is happening in our nation and nations of the world. There is a flood of sewage that is coming and it is already hitting us. And if your life is not built on solid truth, solid truth of God's word and love for God and obedience to God and faith, you are going to be swallowed up. And just like those poor precious souls in that YouTube channel, you know very well when I saw them being swallowed up, they were gone for good. Men, women, and children, not a respecter of people. See, the devil is not a respecter of people. And Jesus said, the prince of this world comes, but he can find nothing in me. Well, the devil's coming, and if you smell like him and talk like him and act like him and live like him and watch what he wants you to watch and do what he wants you to do, you're going to be swallowed up. Breaks your heart. Second Thessalonians, we only got a couple more scriptures. And this is what's happening here now, chapter 2, verse 10. And with all deceivable of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. You, you, they, they didn't want to receive the truth. So I was going to say, what in the world are we doing as pastors shutting down our church services just because people don't want to hear the truth anymore? And I'm wondering if they don't want the truth because pastors don't care about the truth. I had a good friend of mine tell me not too long ago that he was in relationship with a local pastor who's no longer a pastor, wonderful man. And one day, and of course, Internet's been around for quite a while since the 19 late 90s, really. And I could have chosen, I began to use the Internet to put together my books and my sermons, but, but I never let the Internet give me my sermons. And this man told another friend, man, man, another good friend of mine, he, he said, um, he said, oh, I just love the Internet. He said, why? He said, because I can have my sermon ready for Sunday morning in 15 minutes. That's what he said. And, of course, that man's no longer a pastor. And I hate to say this, him and his wife, they've just gone through tragedy after tragedy. I'm not saying the devil's not going to attack us. But listen, you, you can't. I spent all week long preparing my heart for what God wants me to speak. Now, sometimes I won't know what I'm going to speak, but I'm hiding the word of God in my heart all week long. And this morning I got up. I thought I was going to continue along Psalms 23, uh, but the Lord dropped into my heart. If he, uh, uh, Lord, do it again. So Sunday morning I'm preaching a message called, uh, Lord God, do it again. Do what? Do what you did in the past. Uh, you healed one broken, you opened these people's blind eyes, you'll do it again. You did a miracle here, you did a sign there, and it did a wonder here, and you rescued someone here, he'll do it again. But you need to hear from God. You, 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 can't, you can't look to uh, uh, what we call artificial uh, AIs that will help you put your sermons together. I'm not saying you can't use technology, I'm saying you got to hear from God if you're going to give people fresh bread from heaven, if you give them old bread or worldly bread is full of man, and that's here the problem is the church 
is not building what they're doing upon. He, and, and the Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, they who labor, labor in vain. That's what they're doing. They who build the house labor, labor in vain. As we close here, some years ago, um, I was uh, invited to uh, do a dedication service for Lowe's, L-O-W-E-S, in Chambersburg. Uh, I began to deal with them back in about 1982 or 83 and uh, got pretty close to the management. They're all retired and gone. So they left that building and they built another building and they, they asked me to dedicate it to the Lord. We probably have literally, I'm not exaggerating, we, we have uh, bought millions of dollars worth of building materials from Lowe's through the years because we didn't have a Home Depot. And uh, then they built this brand new building in Chambersburg, which is still there. And so they asked me once again to come and dedicate it to the Lord. And I'm there and they got the press and they got all these people and they got a, 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 a vice president. Now I'm sure they got more than one vice president. And so here I am. I'm standing before the cameras and the newsmen, and I preach the scripture. Unless the Lord builds the house, they who build it, build it in, 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 in vain. You know, so that's what I preached to all the media and uh, got done. Didn't preach for very long, 15, 20 minutes. And the vice president of Lowe's came to me and he said to me, he said, you know what, preacher? He said, I've never heard a sermon like that before, you know? And, 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 and you said, well, was that really important for a commercial secular business? Yeah. If you ever heard of J.C. Penney uh, or, or Walworth, they all built their businesses on biblical principles. And, and, and that's why they stood for many, many generations. And when we throw out the truth of God's word, denominations are falling apart. Uh, Christian colleges are falling apart. Society is falling apart. Homes are falling apart. Companies are falling apart. Society is falling apart. Do you know why? Because they have rejected the word of God. And God says when you reject the truth, he rejects you. Perilous times, we're in it. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to do what God told Paul to do in Acts 26, 18. He said, Paul, turn, he said, open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that why? That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So that's what we're going to do. That's what I'm going to do as long as I'm alive. Uh, if the Lord tarries, I might live another 20, 30 years. I don't know. I'm uh, 67 years old this, at this time, 2023, but I'm going to keep preaching the truth. What are you trying to do, Pastor Mike? I'm trying to turn people away from the darkness and to the light. Deliver them from the power of darkness and to the power of God. That's what we're called to do. So, Father, I pray tonight that which I shared as it's gone over the air, that it would reach the multitudes, open their eyes, touch their hearts, Lord, if uh, they're like the prodigal son and they're living in a pig pen, they're in the sewage, Lord, you turn that young man's life around. His eyes were open. He saw the light and he got up out of the sewage and he came home to his father. And I pray that's what would happen now, Father, in Jesus' name.